What's up, what's up, guys? So you ready to make that move and relocate to the best coast, the West Coast, and call Los Angeles, California home? Well, I couldn't be more happy for you guys because I've been here for the past 40 years, a Cali native, completely enjoying it. It's been a total blast, especially now raising my family here as well. And let me tell you, folks, LA has so many different things for so many different people here. It's going to be super exciting moving out here with so many different opportunities available for you with tech, entertainment, and aerospace, just to name a few. It will be a little bit daunting with the move, but hey, you know what? Moving locally can be just as daunting as moving across the country and might be a little overwhelming if you don't happen to know anyone out here, but you got one person you know already, and that's me, your local LA agent, and I'm gonna have you completely dialed in so you know what it takes to get out here and moved in comfortably, fully aware of what to expect. Now, before you start dreaming of sand and surf, there are quite a few things that you need to be aware of before you roll out and get settled into LA. There are quite a few economic and social considerations to take note of that you want to consider before you move out to the second largest city in the United States where the population happens to be greater than 43 states that are in the United States. And on top of that, California and Los Angeles alone expects over 100,000 transplants on a yearly basis. So quiet on the set, we're about to roll into Los Angeles, California, get it dialed in and get you fully aware of what it takes to move back back to Cali Cali keep it dialed in here we're gonna go into it what's up what's up guys it's Eric Haas with EXP in sunny Southern California hope you guys are doing fantastic staying safe at home and if you're out and about I know you're wearing the mask I don't even need to tell you anymore but thank you so much for joining me today if you happen to be new to my channel welcome I'm super stoked to have you here with me today because I want to make sure that you are completely dialed in on how this pandemic is impacting our local real estate markets here on the west side of Los Angeles and also tips tricks and strategies that you should and can be implementing if you're a buyer, seller, investor looking to stay successful in this market or any market for that matter. Now, without fail or do, I got to ask you, please, 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 if you haven't already, smash that subscription button, leave a comment, hit the like button because that is letting the gods of YouTube know that you're feeling me, feeling my content as I'm bringing value to you on a weekly basis, twice a week, 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time on Monday and Friday. So, Without further ado, let's see what it takes to get prepared and what you should be aware of before you move to Los Angeles, California. So what do you need to know when you're moving to the West Coast and calling Los Angeles home? Well, I'm gonna dial that in for you guys with five topics and we're gonna jump into number one right now. It's where do you wanna be? Because unlike other metropolitan cities, Los Angeles spans across 502 square miles. That's ginormous and really not the most walkable city. And that's where where you wanna live really comes into play because LA County includes over 85 cities, all with their own unique aspects and cultural diversity as well. Now, if you're looking to be in the city, beach, or suburbs, that's really gonna have an impact on what you can and can't do, whether walkability, restaurants being accessible, schools close by, you name it those different neighborhoods are really gonna have a major impact on your life. So that's really important to dial that in before you get to LA so you kinda know what neighborhoods you're already going to tap into once you come for a visit. LA actually spans down to the South Bay as well and sometimes includes Orange County and San Gabriel Valley, which is commonly referred to as Greater LA. Now, from the South Bay to the Valley and the West Side to the East Side, here are some of LA's most prominent and popular neighborhoods in no particular order. And we're gonna start with the East Side, downtown LA, Hollywood, Highland Park, Echo Park, Lemert Park, and Silver Lake are really the popular spots that are really more integrated into the city but also have a suburban flair to it at the same time. Then we've got the west side, which is Venice, Mar Vista, Marina del Rey, Santa Monica, Culver City, and Brentwood, which finds you nice and nestled up to the coastline. Got some nice weather there with the breezes. It's a bit cooler off than say on the east side or say in the San Fernando Valley, which is where we have Tarzana, Woodland Hills, and mind you, Tarzana is actually where I grew up, and yes, Tarzana is actually named after Tarzan the movie, and it's a great neighborhood, a great place to raise kids. You get a lot more bang for your buck in the valley as well, but let's look at the other neighborhoods. I mentioned Woodland Hills. There's Encino, Toluca Lake, where my chiropractor is. He's absolutely amazing, Dr. Kosker. Gotta throw a shout out to you, my friend, because you're always making this back 
in pristine shape since I was 15 years old. Sherman Oaks is another great popular area and Studio City. Then we're jumping down to the South Bay and we've got San Pedro, which has a major port, which offers a lot of opportunities as well. We've got Manhattan Beach with some prime real estate right on the beach. A lot of basketball players and athletes are living down there as well. Long Beach, Hermosa Beach, Redondo Beach, and Palos Verdes, just to name a few of the popular ones here in LA. Alrighty guys, let's get into topic number two where we're gonna actually talk about how to choose where to live in LA. And there's two subtopics that you really gotta dial in before you even figure this out. Cost is the first one. And obviously, if you're moving out to LA, there are gonna be many factors influencing where you're gonna be moving, like your workout, school maybe. But first and foremost, cost is gonna be impacting exactly where you're gonna be living in LA. Because according to the Business Insider, right here, right now in 2020, medium price for a one bedroom apartment in Los Angeles, California right now is upwards of $2,300 a month. That, my friends, is not even including the monthly cost of living for a single person, that's about $1,050 a month. And for a family of four, we're looking at about a $3,800 cost of living per month. Again, that's not even including rent. With the cost of rent going up and the shortage of housing being very prevalent throughout Los Angeles, California, we're looking at a lot of adults getting roommates and multiple roommates to live in better and more desirable neighborhoods because of the cost and the lack of housing available. Now fortunately LA is not the highest when it comes down to the standard cost of living per month or rentals. It's actually 18% down compared to New York and 33% down compared to New York with respect to the rent. So you know we're not the highest thank God our friends on the East Coast are way higher than us and again I think that's why we have quite a bit of people moving from the East Coast not because just of the weather but also because of the cost and a lot more cost friendly over here in LA compared to New York. Now some neighborhoods obviously are going to come at a higher cost and that just comes with the territory but you got to make sure that you're making payments on a rental that you can actually afford and make sure that that paycheck you have is completely dialed in with the rent and covering your cost of living per month as well. Traditionally you should be spending no more than 30% of your total net income on rent or your mortgage. Now if you again want to be chilling by the beach which is a premium area say like Santa Monica or Venice or even say like Palisades you're going to be again paying a premium with respect to for the cost of a studio even and even with a studio yeah it sounds great you're by the beach you can wake up in the morning hear the waves get out there for a surf but again you're not necessarily guaranteed any on-site parking so you're going to have to definitely deal with parking on the street and a lot of times the streets have different signs it can be quite daunting and confusing these are things to be aware of before you make your move out here and settle down on an area that you wish to live in in august 2020 we've got a medium price according to the mls of 639 if you're looking to buy a house in Los Angeles, California right here, right now. And that 639,000 actually provides you with a home that's two bedrooms, one bathroom, probably not that big, and it's gonna be in a neighborhood that's probably around average or below average. And that's just simply to do with the cost. Now, if we're looking at the mortgage for a home of that caliber, 60, 639,000, if you're looking to do a 20% down payment, we're looking at 125,000. If you're a first time buyer, you can probably get away with a FHA 3% down. But on top of that down payment and the mortgage, you're looking at principal title and insurance and taxes. So when it comes down to it, all rolled into one, into your monthly mortgage, price we're looking at $3,200 a month. Again, that's not even taking into consideration what your standard of living costs are monthly as well. Now, topic number two we wanna dial in is that commute because I don't know about you, but LA is huge and I already touched on it, it is 500 square miles big. Now, no matter whether you're coming out here for school or work or you just wanna enjoy things out here and be comfortable with this LA weather, let me just tell you something right here, right now. If you, just for example, happen to live in downtown LA and you're gonna be commuting to say Santa Monica, you're gonna be looking at a drive one way 75 minutes and one way back 75 minutes and that's pretty much on a good day if we've got any events going on in LA that number is going to go way higher and I've experienced it it is not fun being trapped on the 405 or the 10 freeway just trying to get home to your loved ones so while 15 miles apart between downtown LA and Santa Monica doesn't seem like an overall large distance distance does not translate necessarily into time and when you're in LA make sure you're prepared leave early it's best to get there early there's no fault in getting to somewhere early but there definitely is fault if you're getting there late all right guys let's get into topic number three which is lifestyle and lifestyle my friends if you haven't been checking out videos that I've been doing already dropping on this channel I devoted a whole video to lifestyle because it's that important that you have your lifestyle in complete alignment with the neighborhood you're choosing in LA and here's why in LA we know traffic is fierce here I mean and it doesn't matter what time of the day it is it's LA traffic on rush hour 
24 seven, unless you're up in the morning, say at three in the morning. How far are you willing to drive every time you leave the house? Whether it's groceries, errands, work, school. These are things that are extremely important and impact your lifestyle at the same time. And when thinking about that, it also allows for you to understand different neighborhoods. If you're thinking that you want to be in a neighborhood that has accessibility to grocery stores and shops and whatnot, then you're going to be looking at areas like Larchmont Village and say the art districts. If you want something that's a little more active or outdoorsy by the ocean, we're looking at Malibu. Or if you want something that offers a lot of hiking and outdoor activity, you know, you would be thrilled living in the foothills of Santa Monica. And if you want something that, you know, offers a little bit more nightlife, maybe more of a speakeasy as opposed to a, say, a sports bar, you got to look at Silver Lake because they've got plenty and more to choose from. Plenty of ventures to result from that as well with new places being found all the time that are awesome. Other things to consider are just the availability of public transportation. In LA, it's not as sophisticated, say, as San Francisco, Chicago, or New York, but we do have some things in play. We've got Union Station, we've got the Expo Line that is still being expanded and whatnot, and then we've also got several different freeways that you've got to definitely get yourself tuned into as far as what you're going to need access to to say for school or work or whatever you need to enjoy your lifestyle and the freeways that are most common for me in LA are the 101 freeway the 10 freeway and the 405 freeway also to pay close attention to for the areas that you're looking at is the crime rate and the statistics that are behind that as well as if you have kids you want to make sure you're checking out the public schools as well as private schools and this new thing called charters which is super cool because it offers another option to public schools at a cost of zero. Private schools obviously cost money per month, but charter schools are pretty cool because they're a little bit different than, say, LAUSD schools. Their teachers actually have to maintain their students' grades and test scores or they get fired. Now, if you're at LAUSD, that's not the case. There's unions and teachers are probably not going to be going anywhere anytime soon. So charter offers another option. Private school is a definitely another option as well if you're looking to pay for your kids' education. Back to transportation. Transportation. We've got our LA Metro system and it continues to expand its services across the Southland. Again, as I mentioned, maybe or maybe not, but there are plenty of city buses. We've got the blue bus. Also in Santa Monica, we've got plenty of these little scooters everywhere with your Bird and Lyft and Uber. So transportation is prevalent and accessible, but also not on, say, the same wavelength as New York, Chicago, or San Francisco for that matter. Now rideshare options we touched on are definitely becoming a popular thing with Uber and Lyft. It's fantastic because it's super popular just for even running errands or avoiding the traffic and not having to deal with the headache and stress of it. Now, regardless of having the ex access to Uber and Lyft, Angelinos, as we're called in Los Angeles, are definitely dedicated to their cars. We love our cars. It is the number one choice when we are looking to get around. So sometimes having a car is definitely a great thing in LA. You don't necessarily need it. Again, there's Uber and Lyft, but a matter of convenience and also people just love having their cars. LA is the spot when it comes to cars being completely customized by people. So it's no surprise that people here love driving their cars still and that is still the number one mode of transportation. Now, a lot of people out there love to ride a bike or love to ride a scooter. LA Metro's bike share system offers shared bikes at hubs and you can take those out for the whole day. You can ride them for $2 for 30 minutes or again, take it out for the whole day for $5. Now, mind you though, they have 30 minute charges. So you're only going to be able to get somewhere for 30 minutes, touch down, have to recharge and then go out again for another 30 minutes. But you've got unlimited rides. Again, you just got to bear in mind that it's going to not have that charge after a while. Now, bird scooters are very popular. That's something that I use on a regular basis. Now, if you're new to LA and you're trying to figure out these freeways, God bless you. The freeways of LA are super intricate, very complex, having a lot of merging and merging off the freeway, off ramps and whatnot. And then we've got plenty of miles per hour with respects to our how fast we can go changing up depending on what freeway you're on 60 miles per hour 65 and 70 miles per hour and then we've got plenty of lanes because it's LA and we've got tons of people tons of traffic it's rush hour all the time as I've mentioned to you before we've got five lanes going north on the 405 freeway and five lanes going south on the 405 freeway so don't be nervous getting on the freeway, especially if you're coming out from the Midwest. I get it. There are no cars on your highway. I've spent many a summer in Iowa, and that's the brilliant, fun thing about Iowa is that you can get to places without having to be stuck in traffic forever. Pay attention to LA because it is a different beast. Not only is the traffic insane, but our drivers here are pretty erratic. They come from all stems of life, have all kinds of impatient and 
intolerant behaviors and for some reason some people think that they're in the NASCAR 500 and or excuse me that's an Indy 500 my bad or they're in Le Mans and they think that they're actually in a race and they're going to beat us to wherever they're going. Unfortunately there's a lot of people out there as well that are just completely distracted and that's happened to me people getting ready in their car in the mornings or the inevitable people texting away. Don't text and drive people. It is the major distraction that caused so many accidents and causes so much traffic in LA on a daily basis. Now because all of us love driving our cars in LA, parking is definitely not something that's easy to find and you got to be paying attention specifically to these parking signs because yes we've got tons of parking garages in Santa Monica and downtown LA and you definitely can pay a premium of $20 or more to be there for all day or longer but you know when you're out and about driving around you want to be able to find some you know ability to park close by to somewhere you're visiting say a restaurant or a shop or what have you and you got to pay attention to these signs that are out there because they are a doozy they are telling you when you can when you can't park when there's street cleaning if there's restrictions if you have to have a permit these are things you got to be aware of and I've learned the hard way sometimes with a 50 or 60 dollar ticket and that's not fun for anyone so make sure when you're out and about in LA and you're taking into consideration where you want to move that there aren't parking restrictions or if there are like where I was living in West LA say Thursday has street cleaning and so on Thursday I gotta make sure my butt's up to make sure that I'm out and about to make my car move by 10 a.m. or else I'm gonna get a ticket. And the same thing happens on Friday. So Thursday and then opposite side of the street is Friday. And so again, you're looking at possibility of getting a ticket if you're not paying attention. So pay attention. Those street signs are there for a reason because the city wants to make money off of you. Rolling into topic number four, we're talking about LA as a land of opportunity. And my friends, it's got plenty of opportunities no matter what you're looking for. The unemployment rate fantastically in LA County has been an, at an all time low prior to this pandemic at 4.6% and with a weekly wage of $1,343 a week. That's fantastic. Now, pandemics has changed some things a little bit and we don't have stats on that, but let me tell you, my friends, LA, it's no secret. It's the entertainment capital of the world, but you gotta be remember too, there are definitely some industries in here that you might not be aware of that are also supporting great economic growth, ability to create more industries going forward in Los Angeles. Now, among them, you may not be aware of, but aerospace is very dominant in LA and that's out of Pasadena with JPL. We also have plenty of tourism, which is just obvious. And then we've got an enormous amount of tech companies coming in whether major ones like Google or Amazon or just smaller ones that are startups or apps that are looking to make a name for themselves. LA has actually become on the coast in Santa Monica, Venice, Mar Vista, Playa del Rey, really gotten the new moniker name of Silicon Beach with all these new tech companies coming in. It's really changing things up and making this a center for tech and economic growth. Now among the few majors that are already here, we've got Amazon, we've got Facebook, we got Google, Yahoo's in here as well. We've got plenty more coming, but those are just a few of the established companies in the neighborhood. Google's actually in the process of building its second headquarters right here in the LA neighborhood in Westwood. We're actually at Pico and Westwood where the old Westside Pavilion was. It was a ginormous mall that is now going to be converted into Google headquarters number two. We already got one in Venice. We've got a second one coming and it's going to facilitate over three thousand plus employees. Can you imagine what that's going to do for our housing supply? it's gonna be non-existent. And you think that roommates is not something that you'd be into? Well, it may definitely be something you're into if you definitely wanna find the house that you're looking for to move to LA right here and right now. Now, if you're moving out here to LA without a job, hey, that's no problem. Finding a job is not gonna be the hardest thing to come by. But if you're looking for one of those high paying jobs where you're gonna have a lot more benefits and you know a, definitely a lot higher salary, those jobs are definitely hard to come by. You gotta make sure that you're out there networking, especially if you don't know people here. That is the way to get into those more high paying job situations. Now, among LA's major employers right here, right now are Google in Silicon Beach in Venice and coming to the West Side Pavilion on the West Side still. Also, JPL or Jet Proportional Laboratory, which is in Pasadena. We've also got the Walt Disney Studios and Animation out of Burbank. We've also got Universal Studios out of Universal. And if you didn't know it, Nestle USA is in Glendale, California. So if you are a chocolate fan, we've got that here for you too. And guess what? The city of Long Beach has a port like no other, bringing in all kinds of goods and transporting things in from all over the world. We've also got San Pedro too, which is another amazing port that does the same thing as Long Beach as well. So we've got complete 
opportunities all around. Again, it's just a matter of what you're looking to do when you come to LA. This is extremely important because it's important to be aware of what the sales tax is when you're coming to any new neighborhood. And LA is no different. Our sales tax in LA is at 9.5% with the minimum wage currently at $13.25 an hour for companies that have 26 employees or less. For companies that have 26 employees on staff or higher, we're looking at $14.25 at that company. Now, each year, I just want to be completely crystal clear with you, on July 1st, the minimum wage will increase incrementally up until it reaches $15, which is projected to happen by 2021. Now, here's something cool that a lot of other metropolitan cities don't offer. LA is a gig economy. And what does that even mean? Well, it's pretty cool if you just you know, looking for part-time work, you know, you can basically get a gig. And what does that gig look like? Well, it can be an Uber driver, a Lyft driver. There's so many different gig opportunities out there in LA, especially with tech that, you know, you will not find a lack of opportunities if you're looking to take advantage of a gig economy. Now, while some people solely use these gigs to add supplemental money to their income, some people just straight up use gigs as a great way to be flexible with their schedule and work when they want to work. Oh, now here it comes down to it, my friends. If you are a sports fan, LA is where it's at because we've got it all. LA is home to some of the greatest athletes and sports teams that we've ever seen. From baseball to basketball to soccer to hockey, we've got it all. We've got something for everyone. And yes, we've got the NFL too. So don't worry that I didn't mention football, but we've got that as well. Now, one of LA's greatest pastimes is going to a Dodger game down at Dodger Stadium in Elysian Park. And the Dodgers are actually locally called the Los Doyers. Definitely a strong piece of LA's identity. Now, if you're an Angels fan, 30 miles south of Dodger Stadium, we have the Angels of Anaheim for your viewing pleasure as well. But hey, I'm all about the white and blue. We used to be prevalent with football teams. We had the Rams, we had the Raiders, but LA went from no NFL teams to picking up two more teams of their own again. And after 20 years of being in St. Louis, guess who came back? The Rams. And also, we ended up getting the Chargers as well. So hey, we've got two football teams and Chargers are actually having their stadium built right now in Inglewood. And it's gonna be amazing. And I'm telling you amazing because it's not only gonna be facilitating football gaming events, but it's going to entertain the Olympics, the World Cup, and World Stage events, bringing you entertainment like no other before, similar to what you see, say, down in Staples Center, where who plays? Our boys on the Lakers, the Clippers, and the LA Kings. Now, it's crazy because you're wondering, how the heck does that even happen? Funny enough, there are actual games scheduled for basketball and hockey the same day. Can you believe that? Now, NBA is on fire, obviously. We've got LeBron James, with the LA Lakers, we got Kawhi Leonard with the LA Clippers as well, and also we've got our girls at the WNBA with the LA Sparks that are just killing it and always dominating in their field, and it's a great opportunity to check out who's playing, see the new talent out there, and also bring the kids because it's a great family adventure. And I told you, we got the Ice Ice Baby with the Kings, and again, same day, could be a hockey game and a basketball game. Stable Center's got a long lockdown. They switch it up in hours from that basketball to the hockey rink, and we're going cold for the Stanley Cup. There is no way, my friends, that I'm leaving out the soccer because I'm a soccer player, born and raised, played it all my life, played it through college, played against some pretty amazing teams in my lifetime, Arsenal's youth team, Ajax's youth team, Stuttgart's youth team. If you're familiar with those teams, you, you pretty much know that those are high class, high caliber teams. But right here in LA, we've got soccer galore and I love it because not only do we have the LA Galaxy playing out of Carson, but now we got LAFC right in downtown LA at the Bank Stadium and it is fantastic. And mind you, my friends, gold and black. That's what I rock. LAFC is my team and sports teams are all the rage here in LA. Now, obviously we've talked about costs and what it takes to move to LA and how you should be prepared. Now let's talk about the fun stuff. Let's talk about that the fact that there's always something to do in LA, no matter what time of the year, no matter what season, there are always events going on, always adventures to be had, entertainment to be experienced, whether indoors or outdoors throughout the year. And me personally, I love the fact that I can actually go snowboarding and hit the beach and boogie board in the same day because Big Bear, my friends, is only a 90 minute drive and if you know the ins and outs with shortcuts, you can actually get there quite quicker. And I hit Bear Mountain for a few hours, make it home by 3 p.m., pop on that wetsuit and jump into the ocean to hit the waves for some boogie boarding. And you know what, that's the best thing because at the end of the day, all the work and no play, that does not jones well for a healthy lifestyle. So we gotta make sure that we're having some fun in there too. Now, I get it, LA can be pricey, so if you're moving here on a budget, please, please do not panic. There are plenty of things to do that aren't that expensive 
relatively costly, effective, and in some respects, absolutely free. And here are some examples of exactly that that can have you on a great adventure, exploring LA at the same time, and finding you right in Venice Beach, on the boardwalk of Muscle Beach where Arnold Schwarzenegger himself was pumping that iron for Conan the Barbarian or movies like Terminator. Plus, we've got a plethora of street performers out there that are ready to entertain you and provide an experience like no other. There's also The Grove and LA's famous original farmer's market in Mid-City. This offers not only an opportunity to have some fun, shop, and have some great food, but hey, these are the places where you're going to see some celebrities. Now, another thing LA offers that I can't say many other cities do is the opportunity to attend a taping. Yes, a lot of these are free and you can find yourself right on the Wheel of Fortune or up on stage at the Price of Right going head to head with Bill Barker or Drew Carey, whoever's hosting the show. Make sure that you're getting these tickets in advance because they are free and they are popular and people want to check those shows out. So make sure if you want to entertain it and get out there and check it out and have a chance to win on the Price is Right, prepare in advance. Now, there are all kinds of tours as well to see celebrity homes. I've seen the double decker out there for the star tours, taking everyone around Hollywood, pointing out the celebrity homes, and that does cost a bit for a tour. Not too much, but hey, there are plenty of opportunities to see celebrities throughout LA and Hollywood. You've got the stars on Hollywood Boulevard as well. And if you want to see some resting celebrities, well, we've also got that Hollywood Forever Cemetery as well. Now, here's something cool. If you're by the beach, take in a free live music concert in Santa Monica at the Santa Monica Pier. This is happening in June and August and starts at at 7 ending at 10 p.m. again completely free there are a ton of people light shows it's truly an amazing fun time and especially getting out there in the evening it's just a different kind of scenario and setup than what you're used to being at the beach all day in the sun at night it's truly an awesome experience especially with the live music now hiking and trails are definitely abundant here in California we've got state parks all over the place whether you want to be keeping it local or you want to be able to make the drive We've got so many different opportunities available. Joshua Tree, if you were looking to go a little bit further or you wanna stay home and kick it at Runyon Canyon or Will Rogers State Park, these are great places for easy to moderate hikes at the same time. Now, exploring downtown LA, you will be finding and coming across some of the most amazing architecture that we have in the city, and especially the well-known architectural treasures of Union Station, the Bradbury Building, which is the actual backdrop for the Blade Runner and dozen of, of other movies, as well as City Hall, Grand Central Market, and more. After a show, stroll through that Grand Central Market, make sure that you obviously check out all the cuisine and the cultures of LA, but also check out this awesome little LA landmark that's been around since 1901, and that is the Angels Flight Railway. And let me tell you, my friends, it is the world's shortest railway in existence, but it's super cool. It's been around since 1901. It's a fun little thing to jump on and get a little bit of a fun ride out of but hey you know what these are super cool things and there's a plethora of really cool things throughout LA that I'm not even mentioning and you as an explorer and adventurer can find out as well and if you find some really cool things please don't hesitate drop them on my comments because I'm always looking for the next adventure as well and there's always something new that you can find in LA so that's another awesome thing about living here in Los Angeles so if you're thinking about getting out to the West Coast and making home in Los Angeles California whether you're renting or buying I'm your go-to guy. I'm more than happy to keep you dialed in and make sure that if you're looking for something and looking for something soon, we can find it whether you're renting or buying a home. I got you dialed in and make sure that you're following all my videos because here I'm just looking to drop value, provide great content so that you guys are fully aware of what to expect, especially if you're making that move to LA. So thanks so much again for joining me. If you haven't already, smash that subscription, like, comment, and I'll see you on the next one. Be safe and take care.